So we're in New York City at the 5G Transport and Edge event. I'm here with Tim Doran from Infinera. Tim, good to see you. Good to see you again, Ray. Um, so can you just tell us about some of the, the key trends that you're seeing in terms of transport networks for 5G? Yeah, so here at the conference, I thought Glenn Welbrock did a really good job setting up the keynote presentation. And in that, he talked about Verizon's use of low band, mid band, and millimeter wave um, frequencies for their 5G network. The reason that's important or relevant um, to us as a transport vendor is at least in part, that um, sets up where the various functions um, are potentially located in the 5G RAN uh, all the way from the radio back to the core. And so um, they're combining things like the radio head with the, the DU or the distributed unit in some cases, and in other cases the, RU, the radio head and the distributed unit is, uh, is actually separated. Uh, and then of course you have the, the CU or the centralized unit. Um, the reason that's just relevant for a vendor like us is it really puts you into a, a, a toolbox mode of being able to provide um, multiple options and capabilities to a company like Verizon and the rest of the, the industry. And those capabilities range from time sensitive networking, ethernet based functionality for eSIPRI and front hall um, to automated DWDM um, tools along with uh, MPLS routing and switching um, that enters uh, the, the transport domain uh, at a certain point uh, and combine all that with good software automation because as we know, all the moving parts of 5G including the transport network and slicing and all those capabilities have to come together. It's really gonna be software automation that makes that all happen. Yeah, that certainly covered a lot of what's going on in, in 5G and the impact on, on transport networks. Um, now, recently, uh, Infinera had an announcement with Telefonica Deutschland. Can you tell us uh, about that and why that's relevant to, to what we're talking about here? So we've been working with Telefonica for a good while now, and they're looking to upgrade or refresh their 4G to 5G um, network, and that includes their transport infrastructure for us, um, and what was mentioned in the announcement, our CNOS operating system, uh, IP MPLS routing functionality, running on top of our DRX hardware um, is what was announced in the press release and going to be uh, deployed there. They're looking at multiple size, sizes or capacities of elements starting at the, the um, integrated cell site location uh, back through some intermediate aggregation uh, as well. One of the key functionalities that they really liked um, and that um, is, is unique uh, to our solution is the ability today to deploy a single pizza box style instance of uh, routing functionality or, or DRX uh, hardware. And with that, um, as capacity grows or if you have additional resiliency or redundancy needs, you can add additional network element or pizza box and you can daisy chain one to two to three from a, a, a redundancy or a doubling or tripling of capacity that's in that particular location. All of that acting like a single routing uh, element and instance and entity, which means uh, operationally elegant and, and simple for them to deploy and to evolve over time. Now, Infinera has been pretty busy recently, not only the Telefonica uh, Deutschland announcement, also at the uh, e recent ECOC event in Dublin, uh, you announced uh, XR Optics. Can you tell us uh, about that and its relevancy to, to 5G transport? Sure. So um, if we think about how optical networks have been deployed really since kind of the beginning, we end up with these point-to-point uh, -point links in the network where we're, we're matching and mating um, optical uh, transceivers and uh, optical communication um, from A to B. And in this case, B could be an aggregation site or a, or a centralized location. And so when we think about all kinds of um, network instances, whether it's, it's mobile or cable or um, back further in the aggregation portion of the network, we have these inherent hub and spoke 
uh, network architectures where we've got a central location fanning out to multiple smaller locations and we're using that aggregation point to collect that traffic. Well, that has led to us to have to use uh, two times n, n being the number of uh, spurs or the number of uh, spokes that we have, we have to use two times uh, the number of transceivers because we have a mated pair on each end. Yeah. XR optics value and, 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 and the technology is instead to create a point to multipoint uh, optical capability where a single laser and a single entity at a um, aggregation location can use a technology called Nyquist subcarriers to send a portion of that signal um, to the spurs or to the subtending locations and thus we can simplify the number of transceiver modules we need um, and we can also simplify the uh, complexity of the aggregation device. Think about a scenario where I might have a single 400 gig aggregation interface, but I could then subtend 16 25 gig interfaces off of it as the spurs. Okay. Um, the one other piece of that is I can also relocate um, and maybe push back further in the network where that aggregation point occurs and thus simplify that aspect of it as well. We did one analysis in um, conjunction with a, a service provider where over a five year period of time, um, the modeling and the analysis had a 70% reduction in capital plus uh, OPEX uh, expense reduction um, over that period of time from simplifying the network, reducing the amount of equipment in it, and um, looking at relocating that aggregation point deeper into the network. Okay, well, it was an announcement that caught a, a lot of attention for, well, the reasons you've just given there, so I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about that in the near future. Yep. Tim, thanks very much. Thanks a lot, good to see you.